Hey everybody, welcome back to Dave's Small Engines. Here we go. Today, my friend dropped off three, well, two and a half Husky Rancher 455s. So this first one is a saw that was run straight gassed. He bought it off of a guy, he got a nice deal on it, but no compression. He told me he popped the muffler off and he saw that classic scored piston and cylinder. So he wants me to replace the piston and cylinder on this. And from my research, it looks like I can put a Rancher 460 aftermarket piston and cylinder, maybe from Meteor, maybe from Highway. Haven't decided on the price point yet, but that should make this saw absolutely rip. This second saw has been his for a few years now. Um, it's running into an issue where it won't spark and it's making kind of a noise. A kind of a rattling, knocking noise. I'm going to diagnose that and try and figure out what it is. It doesn't sound great to me right now, but we'll see what happens. I know he loves his Husqvarna saws, so we'll try to fix that up for him. And this third one, well, what you see is what you get. Just a part saw. It's actually... Uh, taken apart. So really it's just here for parts. Now he told me he had a, it's leaking too, it's not great. He was telling me that he was having a spark issue with this saw. So it's got a couple extra coils with this part saw. Hopefully I can make one of them work. Get this puppy back up and running ASAP for him. Spring is, uh, is upon us. I know he wants to cut some trees. This 455 should work great if I can sort out the rattle and knock issue as well as the spark issue and then i'm going to pull this maybe not in this video in a future video i'm going to pull this 455 apart and replace the piston and cylinder hopefully with the upgraded 460 uh jog and slug as they would say all right so let's focus on the saw that he's had for the longest here he takes really really good care of his stuff i mean i'm sure this has been for, through its fair share of firewood logs but i know he takes these things apart polishes them up, makes them look like new. This is a Husky 455 from Sweden, made in 2011. It looks like it's in fantastic shape. Now, the part that I'm concerned about, obviously, is the, that rattle noise. So let's see if we can figure out what that is, and then also diagnose why it's not sparking. One of the things I love about the Husky saws is, like steel uses their T27 bit, Husky uses a H4, 4 mil Allen. Nice and easy, hardly ever strips. Really makes it a pleasure to work on. Plus, then they have the Phillips. Obviously, I'm not a huge Phillips fan personally. Uh, my American friends might disagree with me. As an impartial Canadian, I don't love the design. But I have a couple long ones here. So let's pop the cover off and see what we can do. I'm really curious to know the source of that rattle or that knock. It happens when I'm pulling the saw over. So it's definitely connected to some sort of movement. So let's see if I can hear it. Decompression valve. Ooh, that's a rattle noise I don't like. I'm wondering if this flywheel isn't hitting on the coil. Let's pull this side off. You guys know I like to do this. Set up everything on a nice towel to make sure I know where all the parts are going. See what I mean? He keeps this stuff so clean. It's awesome. Ooh. So, what I'm doing now is trying to feel for that where it's making that contact. And as I spin the flywheel, you guys hear that? Ah, and it goes by it. So what I think we actually have is a coil that's too loose. 
Let's pop this cover off and get out the coil. What we're looking at here is, I'll zoom in here for you guys. This coil is contacting, yes. There we go. So we've diagnosed the rattle or the noise. This is a magnetic field right here, and it's created between the coil and the flywheel. And as every time this spins around, it sends a charge through the coil, which then in turn goes up into the spark plug, and creates a spark. If you don't set this properly, see that there? That's the magnetic part. And if it's not set properly, it hits up against the coil. So I want you guys to pay very close attention to this trick. The first thing you need to do is get a Don the Small Engine Doctor business card. We're gonna use this card to set the gap on our coil. And I'll show you how. We're gonna back the coil out. Okay. And you're gonna set the Don's business card in between the flywheel and the magnetic contact patches on the coil. Now, you're gonna spin the flywheel to where it makes its contact right here. And that's how you know the gap is perfect. I kid you not, this is the way to do it. Right there. So now I know I can tighten the coil back up. Right there. Tighten the coil back up. I won't do it tight with this, I'll do it by hand. Just wanna get it snug. The perfect gap. So check this out. No contact, no rattle, no noise. It's exactly like what I was hoping to hear. So now before we go any further, let's put it back together and see if we can't get spark. Maybe that was the issue in itself, which would make my job very easy. And my friend, a very happy customer. Okay, let's pop the cover on. Now I'm not gonna tighten these up by hand yet because I wanna see if we have solved the problem, the spark. All right, let's get that plug out. See if we can get a spark. Plug looks good, obviously it looks a little wet because I've been pulling it over. I think this still has fuel in it. Let's ground this plug. See if we can get a spark here. Ignition's on. See what happens. Oh yeah. I'll zoom in. All right, here we go. Nice strong spark. That's what I want to see. So let's put it back together and see if we can get it started. sound good does it you got a little backfire all right so you guys heard it wants to start it feels like it it's trying to kick there at the very end sometimes that can mean that there's low compression it wants to start it can't start because there's just not enough squeeze for that bang inside of the cylinder so let's pull the spark plug out and do a compression test 
It takes only a few seconds. I mean, plug's got some fuel on it, which means we're getting fuel into the cylinder. I'm confident with that. But when I was pulling it over, it just really didn't seem all that, all that tight, all that compression that I normally like to see. Let's do it here. I'll show you guys and we'll see if we can get a compression test going. All right, so we'll see that. Ignition off, obviously. Ten poles with the decompression valve out. What do we got? Ah, just as I suspected. What is that? 60, 70 PSI. Not enough to run, so that's going to be the issue. Okay, well, another thing we can check now is to pull the muffler off and see if there's some scoring. Pop the muffler off and check it out. Number one. Two. Heat shield out of the way. The gasket. Let's check out the cylinder. Jeez, guys, it really doesn't look that bad. Hmm. You can see some slight scoring in there. Yikes. I think it might be cooked. I mean, the skirts look okay, but at the top... That ring looks like it might be frozen. Now, before I call my friend and tell him that this piston and cylinder needs to be replaced, there's one other spot of error that I'd like to check, and that is this decompression valve. Sometimes you can get a leak through here, and then when you're pulling it over, you just don't get the same amount of compression. So what I'm going to do is throw my compression tester back in, and I'm going to get some soap and spray it on this valve and see if I can get it to bubble. So I just use an industrial cleaner bottle here like this and put just some dish soap in. And then I will make sure the valve's out and pull it over. And if I can get that to bubble, then I know I'm losing... I think I am. That's too bad. I'll try it again on the ground just for good measure. Okay, so I did it over again and I still get the same. I get an 80 PSI this time. So I think this piston and cylinder is worse for wear and it's time to put a new one in. Thanks for watching the video. At least now you know how to set the correct gap on a coil, of course, using your boss's business card. That's a great trick that I picked up from Donnie Boy 73 I'm sure you guys will love it. Maybe he'll have to start sending out some of his own coil gapping tools. Um, it's unfortunate about the piston and cylinder situation in this saw. If you guys know anything about the ranchers, this is not a pro level saw. What that usually means is it's quite a bit more extensive to remove the piston and cylinder. I'm going to have to talk with my friend and see if that's something that he wants me to do for him still. Right now I'm going to have a pair of them to do so it would be great to do them both at the same time. Kind of get in that rhythm, know what you're looking for. So I'll let you guys know what he decides that he wants me to do, if he wants me to fix these or if he just wants me to use them for parts later on down the road. If he does want me to fix them, I'll probably order a pair of 460 piston and cylinders so we can bump the CCs up on both of these saws, a little more power, probably what he wants anyways. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe to the channel. I'm having a blast putting these videos out for you guys. Um, it's a Saturday night. I'm here in the shop. I'm having a great time. Hope you liked it, hope it helped you out. Looking forward to the comments, I answer every comment. So if you have something good to say, something bad to say, I'm all for it. Let me know if you liked it. Take care guys.